I wanted to talk tonight about the Shabbos table. Now, uh, it, 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 you, you might think that there's, uh, what's there to talk about? But the truth is, there's a lot to talk about. It's now, there, there's something that people like to say that you bring a, a non-religious Jew, you bring into a from house, a religious house, and he sees a Shabbos table, that could be Makar of him to Yiddishke. That's true. So what is it that the Shabbos table has? We, we have to talk between ourselves. We have to talk about what is the Shabbos table, or how should the Shabbos table be made? If it has, if it's so powerful, it could bring a non-religious too close to Yiddishke. What should we do? Uh, there are people that lack in self-confidence. And I don't mean uh, that it's in a sick way. Normal people, they're not so self-confident. And they get to a stage in life, they sit by the Shabbos table. They can even feel uncomfortable. When they first get married, they have to, they have to so to speak, entertain a wife at the Shabbos table. And not always, and they're afraid they might not do it the right way. Sometimes, before you have children, the wife brings guests. And again, uh, you have to do it right, you have to talk, you have to talk about things. It can sometimes get very awkward and uncomfortable. There are many different ways how to run a Sabbath table. Most important is, when you have children, when you have four or five children sitting at the Shabbos table, and the oldest is uh, 12, let's say, ages between uh, 2 and 12, what do you do to make the children feel the sweetness of Shabbos, the sweetness of Yiddishkeit? How do you do that? There are many different ways and many different families. Every family is like a olomole, a world in itself, a whole world in itself. The dynamics of, the, of each family are, are so different. Uh, the relationship between the father and the mother and the children can be very different from family to family. But there are general guidelines that you could say about how advice that you could give about how to make the Shabbos table be meaningful. Now, as I said, every house is different. I know of houses where the Shabbos table is a place that the father teaches. He, he opens a safer and reads from inside. He reads a Posik, he reads a Rashi, he reads a Medrash, and then he teaches what he has to say on that. And towards the end, he starts teaching everybody about uh, how we don't really understand things. We believe in the Golem of Prague. We open up the Arn Kodesh when they unrush Shoshana Yom Kippur, when it's really the Gabe should do it, and or all kinds of things why we're not so smart. And then we go on to talking about Klal Yisrael. And sometimes the subject comes up that all the whole Jewish people are not so smart because they follow this and this Adam Gadol. And v'chulu v'chulu. That's already talking about the, 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 the elite, the, the highest level. And then there's the lower level. And we just talk politics. Why this one did this and this one did that? And what's going to be with the government? And I've seen even a lower level that they talk about food, about how to cook. And even a lower level, I've seen that the men talk about how to cook. I want to suggest, make a certain suggestion, what I think. And I'm not saying kablu daiti, I'm not saying you have to do it my way. Although I do think that I'm the best, my way is the best I can can't avoid thinking that, but I know that, you, that not everybody is capable of imitating me, but I, but I think what I want to suggest is the best. So I want to say like this, a 
Shabbos table. First of all, let's talk about the idea behind it. Is there such a thing in halacha as a Shabbos table? I mean, if you want to talk just pure halachically, there's a halacha of Sholish Sudas to eat on Shabbos. And um, there's a halacha of uh, eating uh, not just a kezai's pass. In fact, the Mr. Burr brings some days that it's not a kezai's pass and not enough. It has to be a kebeitz. Uh, but there's also a thing you have to be ma'anik the Shabbos. You might ask, what should you do to make an earning Shabbos? So the Gemara says, Rosh Hashumim and Dogim, Dogim. And then the Gemara says, even if a person doesn't have anything, only kosher the arsenal, which is some kind of a, something like a filter fish maybe. So even with that, you go to Siddhas Shabbos. There has to be owning in the Siddhas Shabbos. But where does it say that there's such a thing as as, as a family in Sudas Shabbat? There's such a thing as a family sitting together. I don't think it says any place. Oh, uh, Rabbi Kaplan. What? It says that a, a man is mechuyev to sit with his wife. But Lyle Shabbat also, it's like a more before us. right. That's a thing in how to uh, be me samech your wife. That's a din in Hilchus issues. I don't think it's a din in Hilchus Shabbos. Oh, that can so, yes, so I'm going to say, I, I, I don't know. The minimum, I don't know. I did hear from Rabbi Meir Zuberberg a few times. He mentioned the Chazal, which I didn't yet find. Uh, that he says, some Rebbe says a Shabbos lasso says a Shabbos l'dorosom brisom. So he says l'dorosom l'dirosom. They should make the Shabbos in their dwellings, in their houses. You should bring in the kedusha Shabbos into your house. Maybe that's a source that there's such a thing as a union of a house, a family. In, in Sudas Shabbos, in Kedusha Shabbos. But I'm not, I'm not going now into looking for sources. I just want to talk about what Kalal Yisrael does. And we know and we believe that there's such a thing as Kalal Yisrael. And we can sometimes even use what Kalal Yisrael does. That, that, that has meaning. That's holy. Klal Yisrael knows that there's such a thing as a family sitting together at Siddha Shabbat. So, so, so what, and, and, and I, I was thinking just now that maybe the source is Gavah Me'al Gavah. We know it says in the Zohar that we say uh, that Nusach Sfarad says before Mara Friday night in Kigavna, so it says Lemeve Echod Be'echod. Shabbos is a time of Rosa the Echod, the secret of Echod. There's only one. Just like above, there's only one, only Hashem, Hashem Echod, Ushmo Echod. In Shabbos, that Kedusha comes down to this world. And we are misbato to the Kedusha, which is called Rosa de Echod, the secret of Echod. There's nothing else, only Hashem. That, that's the depth that we're supposed to feel when Shabbos comes in. There is, there's no business, there's no complaining, there's no pains, there's no use, there's no past, there's no future, there's only Hashem. Mayain the last Shabbos is Mayain Olamaba, which is Hashem Echod Ushmo Echod. We have to try to, as much as we can, to connect to that Kedusha, which is called in the Zohar, Rosa de Echod. Mamela, I would say that all your B'nai Bais, you should become one. You should become united. You, you, that, that there should be a togetherness on Shabbos. There shouldn't be any Pirud. If you have a house with a few children, one comes in and eats at this time, one comes and eats at that time, eats 
separately, or they all sit together at the Shabbos table. And this one is reading a magazine, and this one is Rachman al-Islam Chas Vishon, reading a newspaper. And the other one is talking politics, and the father is involved in the food. Is, is that Echod? Is that Rojo de Echod, I'm asking? It's, <laughs> so you ask me, where does it say it in Aloch? I really don't know. It doesn't say it. But it seems to me that the spirit of Rozo de Echod is, is missing. So, Mamela, the, there has to be, you have, we have to look for a way to unite the family and put them all together. What will be if the father is using the Shabbos table to teach, to teach us, to read from inside the Medrash and teach us how he understands the Medrash? I, that might also be missing in Rosa Decha. There's the teacher and there's the Mechablim. So there's two. There's the one that knows better than everybody and those that are listening and accepting and hearing from him. It's also, I don't know if that's Rosa Decha, although every house is different, like I said in the beginning. What I would say is that, that the Shabbos table is a place where the Father initiates stimulating Torah conversations which everybody can connect to and it becomes a unity of a unit of a family now the question is how do you do that when you have a four year old and a six year old and a ten year old and a twelve year old and a wife <laughs> which is also not something so positive how do you do that? And then you have the father, which is smarter than everybody, of course, and he knows, and he has what to say, and he has Torah to say. So he says, how's he gonna, what's he gonna do? So I would suggest like this. Every person, first of all, you prepare. That's number one. But what does it mean to prepare? I don't mean to prepare a word, to prepare something from the Mayona Shal Torah or from the Ture Torah or even from the from the Fasemis even I would say and just come and say it over and everybody would say, Yes you cook like I once saw in about Shuva House. No, that's not what I'm saying. You prepare anything you want. Anything. It could even be a gematria or a Rashi Tavis. Although I would suggest prepare a Rashi. Start to go to the most simple thing because the real, the, the deepest depth is in the simple things. Take a Rashi and go around on Friday thinking, hovering over that Rashi in your head. Over and over again, the Pesach, the Rashi. Remind yourself about the background of the Rashi. That means the part, what this, this piece of Chumash is talking about, what this Parsha is talking about, these few Psukim are talking about. Ask yourself why Rashi said it. Try to understand why it is like that, what, what Rashi says. I once was in a, I mean, I'm not talking so much I was once in a house. Gerach Hasidim, which was an interesting experience to see their 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 way of life and their Shabbos table. And uh, towards the end of the meal, uh, one of the sons, which was probably, he was around 16, 17 years old, he said, I want to say over a word. And it was this week's Parsha, Parsha Samar. And he said, B'Shem de Groh. In the beginning of Parshas and and I think the word was that there's that, be, that there's six days of Easter Meloch uh, of Yamim Tavim. What are they? Pesach is two, Shavuot one and three, Mashaliyam Kippur is five, and uh, two days of Sukkot is. Seven, seven days away. Uh, Rabbi Kaplan, we'll take uh, a break now. Rabbi Kaplan, yeah, okay. okay, thank you.